Wikipedia WikiHPD or Wiki, is a multilingual free online encyclopedia written and maintained by a community of volunteers through open collaboration and a wiki-based editing system. Its editors are known as Wikipedians. Wikipedia is the largest and most read reference work in history. It is consistently one of the ten most popular websites ranked by SimilarWeb and formerly Alexa. As of 2022, Wikipedia was ranked the seventh most popular site. It is hosted by the Wikimedia Foundation, an American nonprofit organization funded mainly through donations. On January 15, 2001, Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger launched Wikipedia. Sanger coined its name as a blend of wiki and encyclopedia. Wales was influenced by the spontaneous order ideas associated with Friedrich Hayek and the Austrian School of Economics after being exposed to these ideas by Austrian economist and Mises Institute senior fellow Mark Thornton. Initially available only in English, versions in other languages were quickly developed. Its combined editions comprise more than 59 million articles, attracting around 2 billion unique device visits per month and more than 17 million edits per month as of November 2020. In 2006, Time magazine stated that the policy of allowing anyone to edit had made Wikipedia the biggest encyclopedia in the world. Wikipedia has received praise for its enablement of the democratization of knowledge, extent of coverage, unique structure, culture, and reduced degree of commercial bias but criticism for exhibiting systemic bias, particularly gender bias against women and alleged ideological bias. The reliability of Wikipedia was frequently criticized in the 2000s, but has improved over time, as Wikipedia has been generally praised in the late 2010s and early 2020s. The website's coverage of controversial topics such as American politics and major events like the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russian invasion of Ukraine has received substantial media attention. It has been censored by world governments, ranging from specific pages to the entire site. In April 2018, Facebook and YouTube announced that they would help users detect fake news by suggesting fact-checking links to related Wikipedia articles. Articles on breaking news are often accessed as a source of frequently updated information about those events. Early life and education. None. Early post-school career. None. Early parliamentary career. None. In cabinet. None. Chief secretary to the treasury. None. Foreign secretary. In 1987-88 it became clear that Major had become a favorite of Margaret Thatcher and he was widely tipped for further promotion. Nevertheless, Major's appointment to Foreign Secretary in July 1989 came as a surprise due to his relative lack of experience in the cabinet and unfamiliarity with international affairs. Major found the prospect daunting and unsuccessfully attempted to convince Thatcher to allow him to stay on at the Treasury. There were also fears within the Foreign and Commonwealth Office that Major would be Thatcher's hatchet man, as her relations with the department under Geoffrey Howe had been poor and characterized by mutual distrust. Major accepted the job and began to settle into the department, living in an upstairs room at the FCO and devolving decision-making where necessary, though he found the increased security burdensome and disliked the extensive ceremonial aspects of the role. Amongst Major's first acts as foreign secretary was to cancel the sale of Hawk aircraft to Iraq, over concerns they would be used for internal repression. He represented Britain at the Paris Peace Conference to determine the future of Cambodia. Major also met with U.S. Secretary of State James Baker, with whom he primarily discussed the issue of Vietnamese boat people, and with Jian Kitchen, foreign minister of China, becoming the first senior Western politician to meet with a Chinese official since the violent crackdown of pro-democracy protesters in Tiananmen Square the previous month. Discussions focused primarily on the future of Hong Kong, 
which Britain was scheduled to hand over to China in 1997. Major spent most of a summer holiday that year in Spain conducting extensive background reading on foreign affairs and British foreign policy. Upon his return to the UK he and Thatcher met with French President François Mitterrand, in which the future direction of the European community was discussed. In September 1989 Major delivered a speech at the United Nations General Assembly, in which he pledged to support Colombia's effort to tackle the drugs trade and reiterated Britain's opposition to the apartheid regime in South Africa. Major also met U.S. President George H.W. Bush in Washington, D.C., and Domingo Cavallo, the Argentine foreign minister, the first such meeting since the end of the Falklands War seven years earlier. Major's last major summit as foreign secretary was the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Malaysia. The meeting was dominated by the issue of sanctions on South Africa, with Britain being the only country to oppose them on the grounds that they would end up hurting poorer South Africans far more than the apartheid regime at which they were aimed. The summit ended acrimoniously, with Thatcher controversially and against established precedent issuing a second final communique stating Britain's opposition to sanctions, with the press seizing on the apparent disagreement on the matter between Major and Thatcher. Chancellor of the Exchequer after just three months as Foreign Secretary Major was appointed Chancellor of the Exchequer on October 26, 1989 after the sudden resignation of Nigel Lawson, who had fallen out with Thatcher over what he saw as her excessive reliance on the advice of her economic adviser Alan Walters. The appointment meant that, despite only being in the Cabinet for a little over two years, Major had gone from the most junior position in the cabinet to holding two of the great offices of state. Major made tackling inflation a priority, stating that tough measures were needed to bring it down and that if it isn't hurting, it isn't working. He delivered his first autumn statement on November 15, announcing a boost in spending and with interest rates to be kept as they were. As chancellor, Major presented only one budget the first to be televised live, on March 20, 1990. He publicized it as a budget for savers, with the creations of the tax-exempt special savings account, arguing that measures were required to address the marked fall in the household savings ratio that had been apparent during the previous financial year. Major also abolished the composite rate tax and stamp duty on share trades whilst increasing taxes on alcohol, cigarettes, and petrol. Tax cuts were also made which benefited football associations, the aim being to increase funding on safety measures following the Bradford City Stadium fire and Hillsborough disaster. Extra funding was also made available to Scotland in order to limit the impact of the community charge which had been introduced there that year. The European community's push for full economic and monetary union was another important factor in Major's time as Chancellor. In June 1990 he proposed that instead of a single European currency there could instead be a hard ECU, which different national currencies could compete against and, if the ECU was successful, could lead to a single currency. The move was seen as a wrecking tactic by France and Germany, especially when the increasingly Eurosceptic Thatcher announced her outright opposition to EMU, and the idea was abandoned. More successfully, Major managed to get the new European Bank for Reconstruction and Development located in London. By early 1990, Major had become convinced that the best way to combat inflation and restore macroeconomic stability would be if the British pound were to join the European exchange rate mechanism, and he and Douglas Hurd set about trying to convince a reluctant Thatcher to join it. The move was supported by the Bank of England, the Treasury, most of the Cabinet the Labour Party, several major business associations and much of the press. With the Lawson boom showing signs of running out of steam, exacerbated by rising oil prices following Iraq's invasion of Kuwait in August 1990, there were fears of a potential recession and pressure to cut interest rates. Thatcher finally agreed on October 4 and Britain's entry into the ERM at a rate of DM 2.95 to £1 was announced the following day. 
an interest rate cut of 1% was also announced on the same day. The rest of Major's chancellorship prior to the leadership contest was largely uneventful. He considered granting the Bank of England operational independence over monetary policy, with the ability to set interest rates, but decided against it. He also agreed a restructuring and write off of some third world debt at a Commonwealth Finance Ministers meeting in Trinidad and Tobago in September 1990. Conservative Party Leadership Contest Prime Minister First Major Ministry Major became Prime Minister on November 28, 1990 when he accepted the Queen's invitation to form a government, succeeding Margaret Thatcher. He inherited a majority government from Margaret Thatcher who had been the Prime Minister for the previous 11 years. The Conservatives' popularity was low with some polling showing Labour's Neil Kinnock with a 23% lead over the Tories in April 1990 following the introduction of the community charge. By the time of Major's appointment, Labour's lead had shrunk to 14%. However, by 1991, the Conservatives had narrowly retaken Labour in the polls. Major's first ministry was dominated by the early 1990s recession which was believed to be caused by high interest rates falling house prices and an overvalued exchange rate. The high interest rates led to more saving, less spending, and less investment in the UK's sectors. Falling house prices stalled construction in the housing sector. Economic growth wasn't re-established until early 1993. By December 1991, unemployment was at 2.5 million. Additionally, Inflation was in double digits and interest rates reached 15%. However, opinion polling for Major's government remained stable during this period. Second Major Ministry On April 9, 1992, Major called an election. To the surprise of many pollsters, the Conservatives won a majority, with 336 seats, and earning 41.9% of the vote. With a high turnout, the Conservatives earned over 14 million votes which remains a record in any UK general election. This was the Conservatives' fourth consecutive election victory. Neil Kinnock was replaced by John Smith as Labour leader in 1992. On September 16, 1992, the pound sterling crashed out of the European exchange rate mechanism after the Chancellor of the Exchequer Norman Lamont had invested heavily in trying to keep it there, adjusting interest rates four times in one day. This event would later be called Black Wednesday. Despite the recession finally ending in 1993, the Conservatives' popularity didn't improve. Major's second ministry was also defined by conflicts within the Conservative Party regarding Europe after the government's defeat on the Maastricht Treaty. On May 12, 1994, the leader of the opposition John Smith died from a heart attack and was replaced by Tony Blair, who continued Labour's modernisation under the slogan of New Labour. Some polling at the end of 1994 and the start of 1995 had Labour with a vote share of over 60%. The Tories remained divided over this era and with an attempt to silence his critics, Major resigned as party leader. In the leadership election, Major comfortably beat John Redwood in June 1995. Following a string of by-election defeats, the Conservatives' majority of 21 had been eroded by December 13, 1996. In the 1997 election, Labour won a 179-seat majority ending their 18 years in opposition. This was the worst general election result of the 20th century for the Conservatives, seeing the loss of all the party's seats in Wales and Scotland. Major's term ended with his resignation on May 2, 1997. While serving as Prime Minister, Major also served as the First Lord of the Treasury and Minister for the Civil Service. He was succeeded by Tony Blair following the 1997 general election. The Conservatives would not win another election until 2010. Final years in Parliament None Post-Parliamentary life None Revelation of affair In 1993, 
Major sued two magazines, New Statesman and Society and Scallywag, as well as their distributors, for reporting rumors of an affair with Claire Latimer, a Downing Street caterer, even though at least one of the magazines had said that the rumors were false. The allegations of an affair with Latimer were indeed proven false. However, an affair with a different woman, Curry, came out a decade later, and both of these publications considered legal action to recover their costs when that happened. In September 2002, it was revealed that, prior to his elevation to the cabinet, Major had had a four year long extramarital affair with Edwina Curry, from 1984 to 1988. Commentators were quick to refer to Major's previous Back to Basics platform to throw charges of hypocrisy at him. An obituary of Tony Newton in the Daily Telegraph claimed that if Newton had not kept the affair a closely guarded secret, it is highly unlikely that Major would have become Prime Minister. In a press statement, Major said that he was ashamed by the affair and that his wife had forgiven him. In response, Curry said he wasn't ashamed of it at the time and he wanted it to continue. Political Engagement Major has become an active after-dinner speaker, earning over £25,000 per engagement for his insights and his own opinions on politics and other matters according to his agency. Major is also actively involved in various think tanks, he is the chair of the panel of senior advisors at Chatham House a member of the International Advisory Boards of the Paris Centre for Peace in Israel, the Interaction Council, the Baker Institute in Houston, and a patron of the Atlantic Partnership. Major was also a director with the Ditchley Foundation from 2000 to 2009, and a president of the influential centre-right think tank The Bao Group from 2012 to 2014. In February 2005, it was reported that Major and Norman Lamont delayed the release of papers on Black Wednesday under the Freedom of Information Act. Major denied doing so, saying that he had not heard of the request until the scheduled release date and had merely asked to look at the papers himself. He told BBC News that he and Lamont had been the victims of whispering voices to the press. He later publicly approved the release of the papers. In December 2006, Major led calls for an independent inquiry into Tony Blair's decision to invade Iraq, following revelations made by Karn Ross, a former British senior diplomat, that contradicted Blair's case for the invasion. He was touted as a possible Conservative candidate for the mayor of London elections in 2008, but turned down an offer from Conservative leader David Cameron. A spokesperson for Major said his political career is behind him. Following the 2010 general election, Major announced his support for the Cameron Clegg coalition, and stated that he hoped for a liberal conservative alliance beyond 2015, criticizing Labour under Ed Mealy Band for playing party games rather than serving the national interest. Nevertheless, in 2013 Major expressed his concern at the seeming decline in social mobility in Britain, in every single sphere of British influence, the upper echelons of power in 2013 are held overwhelmingly by the privately educated or the affluent middle class. To me, from my background, I find that truly shocking. During the 2014 Scottish independence referendum Major strongly encouraged a no vote, stating that a vote for independence would be damaging both for Scotland and the rest of the UK. Major was a vocal supporter for the Remain camp in the 2016 referendum on Britain's membership of the European Union. John Major supported a second referendum over Brexit, stating that the Leave campaign put out a fantasy case during the referendum campaign, adding that to describe a second vote as undemocratic was a rather curious proposition and that he could see no intellectual argument against redoing the ballot. Major feared Brexit would make the UK poorer and could endanger the peace settlement in Northern Ireland. On August 30, 2019, it was announced that Major intended to join a court case by Gina Miller against the proroguing of Parliament by the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. 
In the 2019 general election Major urged voters to vote tactically against candidates supporting Boris Johnson when those candidates wanted a hard Brexit. Major said Brexit is, the worst foreign policy decision in my lifetime. It will affect nearly every single aspect of our lives for many decades to come. It will make our country poorer and weaker. It will hurt most those who have least. Never have the stakes been higher, especially for the young. Brexit may even break up our historic United Kingdom. In early 2020, after the UK formally left the EU with an initial deal, Major expressed his concerns about a future trading deal with the EU being flimsy. In February 2022, Major made a speech at the Institute for Government think tank in London, in which he criticised Boris Johnson over the Party Gate scandal suggesting that he ought to resign, and also the proposed policy for those seeking asylum which he called un-British. In July 2022, immediately following Boris Johnson's announcement he intended to resign as Prime Minister but would stay until a successor was chosen, Major called for Johnson's immediate replacement and removal for the overall well-being of the country. Assessment and Legacy Major's mild-mannered style and moderate political stance contrasted with that of Thatcher, and made him theoretically well-placed to act as a conciliatory and relatively uncontroversial leader of his party. In spite of this, conflict raged within the Parliamentary Conservative Party, particularly over the extent of Britain's integration with the European Union. Major never succeeded in reconciling the Euro-rebels among his MPs to his European policy, who although relatively few in number, wielded great influence because of his small majority and their wider following among conservative activists and voters. Episodes such as the Maastricht Rebellion, led by Bill Cash and Margaret Thatcher, inflicted serious political damage on him and his government. The additional bitterness on the right wing of the Conservative Party at the manner in which Margaret Thatcher had been deposed did not make Major's task any easier with many viewing him as a weak and vacillating leader. Ongoing sleaze-related scandals among leading Conservative MPs also did Major and his government no favours, decreasing support for the party amongst the public. His task became even more difficult after the election of the modernist and highly media-savvy Tony Blair as Labour leader in July 1994, who mercilessly exploited Conservative divisions whilst shifting Labour to the centre thus making it much more electable. Whilst few observers doubted that Major was an honest and decent man, or that he made sincere and sometimes successful attempts to improve life in Britain and to unite his deeply divided party, he was also perceived as a weak and ineffectual figure, and his approval ratings for most of his time in office were low, particularly after Black Wednesday in September 1992 which destroyed the Conservatives' reputation for effective economic management. Major defended his government in his memoirs. Focusing particularly on how under him the British economy had recovered from the recession of 1990-1993. He wrote that during my premiership interest rates fell from 14% to 6%, Unemployment was at 1.75 million when I took office, and at 1.6 million and falling upon my departure, and the government's annual borrowing rose from £0.5 billion to nearly £46 billion at its peak before falling to £1 billion. Majors Chancellor Ken Clark stated in 2016 that Majors' reputation looked better as time went by, in contrast to that of Tony Blair's which appeared to be in decline. Paddy Ashdown, the leader of the Liberal Democrats during Major's term of office, was more sympathetic, writing in 2017 that Major was one of the most honest, brave and sincere men to ever be Prime Minister and that his time in office compares favorably with that of his successor Tony Blair. Writing shortly after he left office, the historian and journalist Paul Johnson wrote that Major was a hopeless leader who should never have been Prime Minister. The sentiments echoed that of much of the press at the time, which was generally hostile to Major, especially after Black Wednesday. The journalist Peter Oborn was one such figure, though writing in 2017 he stated that he now regrets his negative reporting, 
stating that he himself and the press in general were grossly unfair to Major and that this was motivated at least in part by snobbery at Major's humble upbringing. In 2012 Oborn had written that Major's government looks ever more successful as time goes by. Oborn singled out Major's achievements in the Northern Irish peace process, boosting the economy, keeping Britain out of the Eurozone, and his reforms of public services as being worthy of praise. Others remain unconvinced however and, writing in 2011, the BBC's home editor Mark Easton judged that majorism had made little lasting impact. In academic circles, Major's legacy has generally been better received. Mark Stewart, writing in 2017, stated that Major is the best ex prime minister we have ever had, praising him for initiating the Northern Ireland peace process, peacefully handing Hong Kong back to China creating the national lottery and leaving a sound economy to labor in 1997. Dennis Kavanaugh likewise states that Major did relatively well considering the unbridgeable divides that existed in the Conservative Party in the 1990s, chiefly over Europe, whilst also delivering economic growth, a more user-focused public sector and the basis of peace settlement in Northern Ireland. He also notes that Major's unexpected 1992 election victory effectively sealed in the Thatcher era reforms and forced the Labour Party to ditch most of its more socialist-tinged policies, thereby permanently shifting the British political landscape to the centre ground. Anthony Selden largely agrees with this assessment, adding that Major's deep dislike of discrimination contributed to the continuing decline in racism and homophobia in British society and that his proactive foreign policy stance maintained Britain's influence in the world at a time of profound global change. He also notes that Major faced a deeply unfavorable set of circumstances, most of the obvious and pressing conservative reforms had already been completed under Thatcher, the swift nature of his rise to power left him little time to formulate policy positions and upon becoming Prime Minister he was immediately thrust into having to deal with the Gulf War and a major recession. Furthermore, the narrow majority achieved after the 1992 election left him exposed to internal conservative rebellions, which only worsened as time went by, abetted by a hostile press, as it became clear the conservatives would lose the next election. Selden concludes that Major was neither non-entity nor failure. His will be judged an important if unruly premiership at the end of the conservative century, completing some parts of an earlier agenda while in some key respects helping to define a conservatism for the 21st century. Selden reiterated these views in his contribution to the 2017 volume John Major, an unsuccessful prime minister. Political historian Robert Taylor in his 2006 biography of Major, concurs with many of these points, summing up that in the perspective provided by the years of new Labour government since May 1997, John Major's record as Prime Minister looked much better than his many critics like to suggest. Britain's most extraordinary Conservative Prime Minister bequeathed an important legacy to this party and his country to build on. One day both yet may come to recognise and appreciate it. Noted political historian Dick Leonard, however, writing in 2004, was more harsh in his assessment, concluding that Major was a man of evident decent instincts, but limited abilities, as Prime Minister he pushed these abilities to the limit. It was not enough. Representation in the media During his leadership of the Conservative Party, Major was portrayed as honest but unable to exert effective control over his fractious party. However, his polite, easy-going manner was initially well received by both his supporters and his critics. Major's appearance was noted for its grayness, his prodigious philtrum, and large glasses, all of which were exaggerated in caricatures. For example, in Spitting Image Major's puppet was changed from a circus performer to that of a literally grey man who ate dinner with his wife in silence, occasionally saying nice peas, dear, while at the same time nursing an unrequited crush on his colleague Virginia Bottomley in invention, but an ironic one in view of his affair with Edwina Curry, 
which was not then a matter of public knowledge. By the end of his premiership his puppet would often be shown observing the latest fiasco and ineffectually murmuring oh dear. Long-standing conservative MP Enoch Powell, when asked about Major, stated I simply find myself asking does he really exist, whereas on the left Labour's Alastair Campbell dismissed him as a piece of lettuce that passes for Prime Minister and Labour MP Tony Banks said of Major in 1994 that, he was a fairly competent chairman of housing on Lambeth Council. Every time he gets up now I keep thinking, what on earth is Councillor Major doing? I can't believe he's here and sometimes I think he can't either. The media used the allegation by Alastair Campbell that he had observed Major tucking his shirt into his underpants to caricature him wearing his pants outside his trousers, as a pale grey echo of both Superman and Supermac a parody of Harold Macmillan. Bell also used the humorous possibilities of the Cones hotline, a means for the public to inform the authorities of potentially unnecessary traffic cones, which was part of the Citizens Charter project established by John Major. Major was also satirist by Patrick Wright with his book 101 Uses for a John Major, in which Major was illustrated serving a number of bizarre purposes such as a train spotter's anorak or as a flagpole, Wright published a second collection of 101 uses, as well as a parodic cartoon biography of Major entitled Not Inconsiderable, being the life and times of John Major. Private I parroted Sue Townsend's The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, age 13 3 4 to run a regular column The Secret Diary of John Major, age 47 3 4 in which Major was portrayed as naive and childish, keeping lists of his enemies in a Ryman's notebook called His Bastard's Book, and featuring my wife Norman and Mr. Dr. Mawini as recurring characters. The magazine still runs one-off specials of this diary on occasions when Major is in the news, such as on the breaking of the Edwina Curry story or the publication of his autobiography. The impressionist comedian Rory Bremner often mocked John Major, for example depicting him as John 90, a play on 1960s puppet show Joe 90, his impersonation was so accurate that he managed to fool the MP Richard body that he was really speaking to Major in a prank phone call. The incident prompted Cabinet Secretary Robin Butler to warn Channel 4 head Michael Grade against any further calls for fear that state secrets could be inadvertently leaked. Major was often mocked for his nostalgic evocation of what sounded like the lost Britain of the 1950s, for example, his famous speech stating that 50 years from now Britain will still be the country of long shadows on county grounds, warm beer. Invincible green suburbs, dog lovers, and pools fillers and as George. Orwell said old maids bicycling to Holy Communion through the morning mist. Major complained in his memoirs that these words had been misrepresented as being more naive and romantic than he had intended, and indeed his memoirs were dismissive of the common conservative viewpoint that there was once a time of moral rectitude, Major wrote that life has never been as simple as that. Throughout his time in office Major was often acutely sensitive to criticism of him in the press, his biographer Anthony Selden posits this to an inner vulnerability stemming from his difficult childhood and adolescence. After leaving office, Major stated that perhaps up to a point I was too sensitive about some of the things in the press, I'm happy to concede that. But, the politicians who are said to have hides like rhinos and be utterly impervious to criticism, if they're not extinct, they are very rare and I freely confess I wasn't amongst them. Major has been depicted on screen by Keith Drinkle in Thatcher, The Final Days, Michael Maloney in Margaret, Robin Kermode in The Iron Lady, Mark Ozel in the TV series The Crown, Gordon Griffin in Westminster on Trial and Roger Sansom in On the Record. Footage of Major's 1992 election win is used in Patrick Keeler's 1994 documentary film London. Major was also one of the Prime Ministers portrayed in the 2013 stage play The Audience. Less flatteringly, Major was the subject of the song John Major Fuck You by Scottish punk band Oi Polloi. Major was portrayed by Johnny Lee Miller in the fifth season of The Crown in 2022. 
Major called the series a barrel load of nonsense for a fictitious storyline in which the then Prince Charles lobbies Major in 1991, attempting to oust Queen Elizabeth II from power. Netflix defended the series as a fictional dramatization. Personal Life Major married Norma Johnson on October 3, 1970 at St. Matthew's Church, Brixton. She was a teacher and a member of the Young Conservatives. They met on polling day for the Greater London Council elections in London, and became engaged after only ten days. They have two children, a daughter, Elizabeth, and a son, James. John and Norma continue to live at their constituency home, Finings, in Great Stookley, Huntingdonshire. The couple also own a flat in London and a holiday home on the Norfolk coast at Weybourne, which they have in the past invited ex-soldiers to use for free as part of the Afghan Heroes charity. As with all former Prime Ministers, Major is entitled to round-the-clock police protection. Elizabeth Major, a qualified veterinary nurse, married Luke Salter on March 26, 2000 at All Saints Church, Summerby having been in a relationship with him since 1988. Salter died on November 22, 2002 from cancer. James Major, a former retail manager and nightclub promoter, married game show hostess Emma Noble on March 29, 1999 in the chapel crypt at Westminster Abbey. The couple had a son, Harrison, born July 2000, who later diagnosed with autism. The marriage ended in an acrimonious divorce in 2003, with Noble accusing Major of unreasonable behavior. James later married Kate Postlethwaite, the mother of his second son. Major's elder brother Terry, who died in 2007, became a minor media personality during Major's period in Downing Street, writing a 1994 autobiography, Major Major, Memories of an Older Brother and appearing on TV shows such as Have I Got News For You. John's sister Patricia Desoe kept a much lower profile, she died in 2017. After leaving office Major became aware that his father fathered two half-siblings extramaritally Tom Moss and Kathleen Lemon. Research conducted by Paul Penn Simpkins, a genealogist formerly employed as a researcher at the College of Arms and as a heraldic consultant at Christie's, and subsequently corroborated by Linda Rippon, a genealogist employed by Lincolnshire Council, showed that John Major and Margaret Thatcher were fifth cousins once removed, both descending from the Crust family, who farmed at Leek, near Boston. Lincolnshire. Major has been keen on sports since his youth, most notably cricket. He is also a supporter of Chelsea FC and a patron of British gymnastics. He also enjoys gardening, listening to music and reading, Anthony Trollope being among his favorite authors. Major is a Christian, though his upbringing was never especially religious and he states that he is a believer at a distance. He shied away from the topic when in office, stating that I have always been a little wary of politicians who parade their faith, and prefer a little English reserve on the subject. Honors in the 1999 New Year Honours list, Major was made a Companion of Honour for his work on the Northern Ireland peace process. On April 23, 2005, Major was bestowed with a knighthood as a Companion of the Order of the Garter by Queen Elizabeth II. He was installed at St. George's Chapel, Windsor, on June 13. Membership of the Order of the Garter is limited in number to 24 and as a personal gift of the Queen is an honour traditionally bestowed on former Prime Ministers. On June 20, 2008, Major was granted the freedom of the city of Cork. He was also granted the Outstanding Contribution to Ireland Award in Dublin on December 4, 2014. On May 8, 2012, Major was personally decorated at the Imperial Palace in Tokyo by the Emperor of Japan with the Grand Cordon of the Order of the Rising Sun in recognition of his invaluable contributions to Japan-UK relations through his work in the political and economic arena, and also in promoting mutual understanding. While Prime Minister, 
Major had pursued energetic campaigns aimed at boosting bilateral trade, Priority Japan and Action Japan. The 1991 Japan Festival also took place under his premiership. Awards In 2008, Major won the British Sports Book Awards for more than a game. Public Commemoration An oil painting of Major, painted in 1996 by June Mendoza, is part of the parliamentary collection, as is a bronze bust by Anne Curry, unveiled in the members' lobby on October 16, 2017. There is another bust of Major in the Norman Shaw Building North by Neil Andrew, sculpted in 1993 and installed in 2004, however this is not accessible to the public. A large bust of John Major by Shen Da Amory in Huntington Library was unveiled by his wife Norma in 1993. A painting of John Major by Daikin Swan is on display at the Carlton Club, and was unveiled by his wife Norma in 1994. The National Portrait Gallery holds two paintings of Major the first official portrait of him as Prime Minister, painted by Peter Deegan in 1994, and one of John and Norma by John Winnicott, painted in 1997. There is a large John Major suite at the Oval, home to Surrey County Cricket Club. The venue also contains a painting of Major. There is a Heritage in Sutton plaque on St. Helier Hospital where John Major was born in 1943, and a plaque commemorating him in Archbishop's Park next to Lambeth Palace, included as part of the Lambeth Millennium Pathway. There are also various plagues commemorating facilities opened by John Major, at Brampton Memorial Centre, Brampton, Haymerton Zoo Park, Haymerton, Cadbury World, Birmingham, a tree commemorating the restoration of the River Mill Pub. Eden Sacon, the gardens at Hinching Brook Hospital, Huntingdon, the North Terminal Extension at Gatwick Airport, Huntingdonshire Football Association Headquarters, Huntingdon, and Alconberry Wheeled Cricket Pitch. In 2013, the town of Candelada in Spain named a street for John Major, as Major has holidayed there for many years. Major Close, in Loughborough Junction near where John grew up is also named for him, the street was to be called Sir John Major Close, however this long name breached council guidelines. Arms See also 1997 Prime Minister's Resignation Honours Electoral History of John Major First Major Ministry Second Major Ministry Notes References